Walter Wonka. I'm already into the 420, damn it. So what are you doing? Nothing. Nothing? Why not? Trying to get on this lifestyle radio website. Sounds like a cool website. Yeah, it's alright. Oh, yeah, I might have it. You might have it. You're listening to Lifestyle Radio. The opinions expressed during this show are those of the individual participants and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of their associated organizations or Lifestyle Radio. <laughs> Is this live? Well, it will be in a minute. Okay, so how many listeners do you got going on now? Or blame it all on my own hypocrisy. Oh, really? It varies week to week. It's education. But it's still a tradition. It's not a tradition. Oh. Step up and speak. Okay. Hello, everyone, and welcome to Pace Radio Show. I'm your host, Del Graham, and we are live here at LifestyleRadio.net. And for the first time, we are also broadcasting live at the Ganjanesis Vapor Lounge. They are located at 242 King Street West in Hamilton. So if you're in the area, stop in and say hi to Paula. And while you're there, check out their Shatterizer Vaporizers. You can test them out for sure, right there, right on the place. So tonight I am joined by my joint host, Northern Ontario, Kim Cooper, who has invited a guest who is a patient and who helps patients with their wellness. But first, Kim and I are, as always, we're going to discuss some news. Kim? Yeah, lots in the news today. It's been an exciting day in Canadian politics. Yeah, well, it's been exciting. It's been an exciting week. First, there was the Senators. Yes. Uh, having the vote on uh, Bill C-45. Um, that was uh, approved 52 to 29 with two yeah. people abstaining. Yeah, only two abstentions, which uh, were both done because both of those parties have ties to the cannabis industry. So they felt the need to abstain from the vote, as we discussed in a previous show. Um, yeah. But yeah, so I mean, that passed through pretty much fairly quickly through the Senate and then back to the, the House of Commons, uh, which had to uh, take a look at all of these revisions and provisions that the senators put forth and decide which ones they were going to accept, which ones they were going to reject and send it back to the Senate. Yeah, well, they voted. On it. They approved it 52 to 29, uh, and they the uh, one fellow, Senator Tony Dean, he says that we have seen in the Senate a historic vote that ends 90 years of prohibition of cannabis in this country, 90 years of needless criminalization, 90 years of not so just so no approach to drugs that hasn't worked, and uh, he's right. And but I can also tell you, there's some advocates out there that say that. Prohibition hasn't ended. Uh, no, the, very much so. A lot of people are calling this uh, not legalization, but prohibition 2.0. Uh, you've been hearing versions of, uh, of that going about on social media and in private conversations quite a bit these days. Yeah. The amount of penalties that are attached to the legalization bill, uh, there, there are a lot of them, that's for I sure. Yeah, I believe there's another 45 different uh, penalties that have been added. And then there's that really controversial one um, with the with the, um, uh, the youth end of things when it comes to if you pass a joint to uh, a minor. Uh, yeah. For example, a 19-year-old given uh, a joint to a 17-year-old girlfriend could technically face 14 years in jail. Yeah, for sure. Um, these things were not addressed, uh, and they should have been. Um, so that's uh, it's still a long way to go, but it's one step forward. We can't fix any kind of legalization regime if we don't start somewhere. So it's great that it is a start, but it's definitely nowhere near perfect. Correct. Now we start to tweak it, get it a little bit better. Yep. As we go along, eliminate some of that stuff, prove some of it uh, unnecessary, and the courts will probably find, such as that 14-year sentence, uh, cruel and humane punishment, and will find it uh, non-constitutional. Yeah, I think a lot of parts of this bill will wind up facing court challenges, and it's going to take the courts to push the evolution uh, of legalization through Canada. Yes, exactly. Now, with that vote all over and done with, everybody was asking, so when's it going to be legal? When's it, when are people going to be able to go 
purchase cannabis? When are they going to be able to grow their own plants? Yep. Uh, yeah, it, it's uh, could have taken the, the announcement originally was that it would take approximately 8 to 12 weeks. Uh, going on the 12-week mark, that would put the start date sometime around mid-September. Uh, but uh, And that's what most people were banking on was, was a September of some time start. Even Bill Blair was quoted as saying, more than likely a September start. Mm-hmm. Uh, Justin Trudeau announced today, not quite so. No, he did not. He did not uh, stick to his 8 to 12 week prediction that people thought the government was going to come with, or they've actually announced, they announced the 8 to 12 weeks. It's actually 17 weeks. Yeah. 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 Not going to be September. We're looking at October. October 17th is the day that we are legal in Canada. It's like 50% longer than what they told us it would be. So now now we're looking at October 17th. So that's the 10th month, 17th day. You can almost get a 710 out of that, you know. Almost get a 710. Almost get a 710. It will absolutely become a new uh, sort of cannabis holiday in Canada for sure. October 17th will be marked on everybody's calendars across the nation that consumes this plant forevermore in time. Guaranteed uh, for that for sure. Um, I think my personal view, um, they didn't want an early or mid-September date. Too many people would put plants out. And they're not ready for that. Uh, I think putting it into mid to late October pretty much counts everybody out for putting any kind of plants outdoors whatsoever. So that gives them an extra year to deal with the growing situation uh, as far as outdoor grow ops are concerned. Yeah, but everybody will be able to fire up uh, some plants in their house and uh, start to grow on. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, um, yeah. But I, I personally, I think that's why they chose October over yeah. September, because they're just not ready uh, to see the plants that are going to uh, be out on people's balconies and so forth across the nation. And as we know, some people can end up in jail yeah. for growing their plants on their balconies. Depending, so. depending on where you live. <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah. Right, that's right. Well, let's bring, uh, let's bring our guest in and we can get her opinion on this, uh, on this announcement today. So at yes. this time, I'd like to introduce um, oh the person who I described as a patient and uh, helps patients with their wellness. Uh, we'd like to welcome Virginia Bedell to the Pace Radio Show. Hello, Virginia. Hello. Hi, everybody. Uh, hey, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm actually having a wellness tea right now to stay awake, believe it or not. I'm actually having a... a wind down tea or sleepy time right now but i i need the energy so i'm having a green tea with ginseng and boost up that energy level there All you right. go oh yeah now you get uh, your energy you'll get your energy boosted so high you're still you know you're gonna need something to put you back down uh, well that's when i fill up the king foam with some uh you know some of uh Lovely different types of cannabis. My favorite being White Castle. Oh, it's so nice. delicious. <laughs> there you go. Nice. nice. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, I was, so, um, sorry, so before, I, before I hand you over to Kim so she can start firing questions at you, um, so what do you think about all this legalization vote this week, uh, the October 17th day? <laughs> there you go. Is it? <laughs> oh, geez. I think I've tried to change underwear more often than these ones. It's every. I'm sorry, but like reality, um, and the fact is that it's it, it's continuously changing. I don't think we're there yet. There will be more changes coming. And, oh, sure. Uh, yeah, I mean, a year ago, well, sort of every announcement that came out, it seems to be getting worse. So now they're actually improving. It's almost like they bring out the worst, they bring out the the best afterwards. Now, the 14 years sentencing, I see that being just highly debatable. I mean, you can't legal, you know, you can't legalize a product and then put all these regulations on it. <laughs> That's just going to be a waste of court time and. Uh, and honestly, for everyone that can represent themselves, it's going to be an easy one. And for anyone that uh, has the budget to hire uh, lawyers, they're going to be uh, pretty happy with the uh, these rules and uh, what's to come. However, I do believe that they are highly um, uh, debatable and that eventually they'll be changed because you can't have 
something uh, that is legal and then uh, being put in uh, such high punishment to it. Yeah. it. It just doesn't make sense. It really doesn't. Yeah, I mean, when you legal, compare to other but... more... Sorry, go on. No, no, I'm sorry. I'm just saying it's legal, but she's still going to jail for it. Yeah, I mean, uh, when you compare it to other more severe crimes that get less of a punishment, yep. more severe crimes to children, actually, and they get less of a punishment, simply doesn't make sense. This actually being, in my in my perspective, and I'll, I'll just put myself out there for, uh, for judgment, but in my personal opinion, and people that I've dealt with, there is actually a benefit to children in this situation. As a matter of fact, my son was a minor when uh, we started using cannabis. He was actually what you would consider a minor between 15 and 16. And here's the situation. He was going out there and having cannabis on the streets with whoever was selling it to him, uh, paying ridiculous amounts. And who knows what it was, you know, whether it was sprayed with raid or not. And uh, instead, you know, he had the ability to have access to a clean product, no cost to himself, from a family-grown greenhouse. And uh, whether or not I had that available to him, he still was going to do it. He was either going to do it with me or he was going to do it outside of the home. So That's I right. preferred that he did it I, he did it with me. And here's the situation. I had my 15-year-old who constantly that summer was called by his friends and go, hey, man, do you want to go uh, hang out? And he's like, no chilling with my mom you know yeah, because yeah. it's cool to chill with his mom right? and his friends are going who the heck wants to chill with his mom you know but <laughs> my kid did and he uh, did academically well he uh was in a gifted program he got a honors uh he actually got um um along he got a, a lump sum of money along with his honors and not only that he went on to work as an architect and, and after that, after five years of working for successfully being a project manager in an architecture firm, he's now come to work with me in the marriage wellness business. I have six other children. He's just one of the older, uh, the oldest. And all except for the younger ones um, are cannabis users and are respectful, you know, members of society and have respectful jobs. Yeah. And, so, um, so when you and, hear when you hear them say. What about the children? That must make you just break up hysterically. It does. And that's why I was laughing, you know, and because there's also doctors, which I was part of a panel who say that there's actually a real benefit in, um, in cannabis usage for women during pregnancy and then more research or it needs to be done. And people will go, oh, they'll sigh. But what people don't realize is that um, high-risk pregnancies are being treated with morphine and Percocets and many other heavier drugs than the babies, the, the, the newborns, actually have to go through rehab. They have yep. to go through withdrawal to get yep. off these drugs. And with cannabis, you don't have that issue. You may have a very hungry baby, and that was actually my issue with my uh, triplets. I had uh, triplets who came to full term, which was uh, full term for triplets is 32 weeks. And I went to 34. Excellent. And, uh, I, I, I'm going to no interrupt you. I'm going to interrupt you for one second because usually before I get started, I like to do a little blurb to let people know who we're talking about. And we kind of dove right in here. So I'm going to interrupt you before you tell this story okay, uh, so sure. that I can let people know who you are and stuff. OK. Um, okay. So, yeah. So what, who we have tonight is Virginia Vidal, of course, from Mary's Wellness. Uh, I met Virginia last year, a year ago, at the O Cannabis Festival. Uh, that time it was held at the Sheridan Center in Toronto. Uh, she spoke at this year's O Cannabis uh, Conference, uh, and uh, a friend of the show, Tracy Lamery, did record that as well. And I got a chance, an opportunity to watch it and and, and watch you speak that day. Very, uh, very touching, very um, educational story that you told that day about your experience with cannabis use as a patient uh, and very controversial as well because your personal experience was as you say uh, you used it during your pregnancy uh, you were pregnant with triplets it was a high risk pregnancy uh, and instead of using pharmaceutical aids such as Percocets morphine and other harmful drugs you chose cannabis 
as your means to get you to term with your babies. And at the end of it all, you came up with your tea, which is the thing that kept you eating and brought you to term. And now you are full-blown marketing your tea to other people to help them through not only pregnancies, but other things that that this tea can help with because it is uh, such great medicinal effects. So Virginia, my God, your your story, um, I'm sure it it shocks a lot of people, right? Right. And sometimes you kind of need that. You really need that to get people out of their current frame of mind and come to a different understanding. Sometimes you need to shock and then educate yeah. so that you break that mold. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely, um, and I yeah. Felt, and sometimes I don't mind that shock effect. And I've gone, actually, I don't know if you've uh, watched Politically Blind Date. I've gone uh, up against uh, a, a, a politician who was completely against and one who was for cannabis. And he was appalled and shocked. And I said, really, it's up to each individual um, experience. And you know, there are situations like including myself where I was given um, an, alter- an alternative. And my alternative um, was not cannabis. Uh, my alternative to pharmaceuticals, because the pharmaceuticals were not working, was birth selection. And that was an alternative that I was not willing to live with. And not everybody can live with. And I know I could not live with that. So for me, uh, having cannabis was a much better option than what I was facing. And, um, and it made sense. And so I feel that uh, you could be whoever you want. You could judge. But to me, I made the choices that made sense for me and that I could live with. Well, absolutely. And, and like you were saying um, just earlier, you know, if you would have taken the pharmaceutical option, there was, you know, a good chance that your kids would have been born addicted to Percocets That's or morphine right. or and they would have gone through withdrawal. Or worse, not made it at all. Like my good friend who stripped us, who we were, our doctor connected us for support with each other because we we're expecting around the same time. And unfortunately, uh, she lost all three of them at 23 weeks due oh. to the fact that triplet A had a, got an infection. Now, I had a doctor say that cannabis actually helps prevent infections in fetuses. Excellent. So my good friend actually uh, called me the night that she unfortunately lost her babies, and I was I was in tears with her, and she yeah. said, um, she she told me that night uh, while she was in tears that if she was ever to be pregnant again, that she 100% would be using cannabis as her um, method of treatment and medicine, and she yeah. feels that a lot more research needed to be done for sure. Yeah, for sure. And it's and it's it's so hard watching friends and, and loved ones going through this when we know um, what the effects of cannabis could have made such a difference, but the education yeah. and the research just isn't out there to enough of the people. I just find that we have many people making all these decisions and choices for us that they have no idea or experience with. And they maybe that they should uh, get more data and information from the people who actually have experience with it, who actually know what is happening. And I heard you guys talking about, uh, you know, that we're going to have to depend on the law. And I must say, I, I am really in belief that the law is there. um, And many, and many judges have seen through uh, what's really going on and have taken the side of the people. I feel that, uh, you know, in my case, especially when dealing with, uh, possession and, um, you know, charges of possession for 19 grams where I had to self-represent for 12 months and go to trial twice and self-represent, I felt that the judge was really empathetic to my case and very, and so was the Crown Attorney. And more and more uh, people within the legal system are understanding and understanding the patient and understanding their need for cannabis. Yeah, and I think that and that is going to be explained and that we're going to have um, as we move forward the law on our side. Yeah, I, I think uh, I think you're you're correct in that as well. I've seen an evolution of that and through the court system with crown attorneys and judges and stuff like that. Uh, the problem is it doesn't seem to be trickling down to the police department or trickling up to our heads of government. 
Uh, it all depends on who you're dealing with. I found even in police, uh, dealing with police, I found that uh, there is more of an understanding and depending how you are and how you present yourself. If you're presenting yourself as a patient, I find that there's more of an empathy even from the police, uh, more of an understanding. Uh, when it's more of a recreational and a fun aspect, there isn't so much of an understanding. They tend to be a little more, um, I guess, bullies or authority, and it really depends on who you're dealing with. But that, that's been my, um, my experience. You live in a good area the then. You live in a good area. <laughs> I I come, you come to Northern Ontario and it doesn't make a difference. <laughs> really? Eh? Even whether you're a patient or not? No, page, patients uh, are arrested as recently as six months ago up here holding their MMAR. Really? Yes. <laughs> so it, it, I mean, it, it I, happens. I'm... It happens. Okay. It still happens. It's unrecognized. They just, they simply do not care. Um, so largely, I think it depends on who you're, where, where you live uh, and the police force's education, uh, attitudes and bias. So, I mean, it's an evolving situation across Canada. I think Southern Ontario um, I think is because a little Canada bit hasn't quite seen, sorry to interrupt, but I, I yeah. just think that is happening because Canada hasn't quite seen lawsuits like in the U.S., uh, has I mean, people get cheap for everything, and in Canada, we're a little more uh, reserved about that because it takes yeah. twenty five thousand dollars before you could sue anybody. But in reality, it really takes a few people to get together because that's uh, that causes a lot of stress, especially for patients. Yeah, for uh, sure. That year that I had to deal with that issue, it was very stressful, and it caused me um, many more health issues that I really needed to deal with and unnecessarily, really unnecessarily. Oh, for sure. I mean, somebody holding their MMIR papers. And I mean, this was a, a friend of the show. Her name, I can name her. It's Kelly Clush. Uh, she lives in southern Ontario in the Hamilton area, Niagara region. Uh, and she used to run the Niagara Cannabis Club there. And she was on her way back from out west. And she was coming through Hearst. And she got pulled over with like, I think it was like a quarter ounce of, of cannabis on her. And she had her MMIR papers and the OPP and Hearst charged her and she had to come back to court from Hamil from Niagara all the way to Hearst uh, to go to court to fight the charges. Now, how did they come uh, across her, uh, her supply? I'm wondering, was it because she was, I mean, if you're losing it while you're driving, then they'll go. No, the she was time. passenger in the car and it was in the glove box. I mean, there was no use or anything <laughs> like that. They did not. They just said no. We don't recognize your MMAR papers because these expired on the date MMAR expired. And she explained oh, to them. Oh, the old MMAR, yeah. Yeah. No, this yeah, the original. And, you know, holding that over. And the cop's oh, like, no, geez. forget it. You're going, you're going to jail because I don't recognize your papers. Oh, wait, yeah. they actually arrested her? Yeah. They put her in cuffs oh, on goodness. the side of the road, in cuffs and everything. They wound up writing her a ticket for her to appear in court and let her go. But they put her in cuffs on the side of the road. Wow. Wow. Yeah. This was sad. like in so November. what is she doing about it? Well, she's she fighting it, of course. It? She's fighting it, of course, is but she? she's got to go back from Niagara to Hearst to go to court. Yeah, what's that, right. a 10-hour drive? Yeah, minimum. Oh, my gosh. Okay, yeah, 10, so I got to honest with you guys. I got to be honest with you guys. Okay, so um, my charges were up in Peterborough, and yeah, I'm in I, Toronto. I know where that is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just down the road. <laughs> <laughs> On Salon Road. <laughs> um, I actually was, you know what the funniest part was that the female cop says to me, she goes, you know, that stuff must have been good. And I said, why? She goes, because I could smell it before I could see you. And I'm like, yeah, it was really good. <laughs> <laughs> see, now you were caught consuming though, right? So that was different. Yeah, but I was in the driver. I was a passenger. Okay. All right. All right. So now under the new laws, they're saying even as a passenger, you cannot can no longer consume in a, in a oh, car. Bird. There goes all our fun. Yeah. I wonder what's going to happen with the medical patient. Everybody will be getting convertibles from now on. Yeah. You'll well, a whole I, new buy of convertibles. But, I mean, it's kind of controversial because under the laws for the medical patients, it says that we as medical patients can consume wherever we need to. 
uh, and that those laws don't apply to us. So does that carry on into a car as well? I mean, is that going to be the next court challenge as well? There's another thing that's up for debate, right? Okay, here's, here's all the, the things that are really, I feel like are really in question here. So you're not allowed to smoke around your kids, but then you're not allowed to smoke in your car, but then you're not allowed to smoke out in public. But what the no. heck? Yeah. What, in the bathroom only? <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, we got off track, but we're going to get back on track, I think, after the break, aren't we? We got yeah. uh, we're, we're gonna, but, I, mean, I was going gonna, gonna to wait a couple of minutes, no, two or right. three minutes. So. All right. All right. About ahead, the whole the car thing and smoking in the car is that I know for a fact some people who do not want to smoke in their house because they have small children, and that's where they go to. They go to their car, so automatically their car... Even with, whether they're smoking on that drive or not, their car automatically smells like cannabis because that's their to-go-to space. They're, you know, escape from their household or their children. So I don't know how they're going to deal with all these different uh, aspects and what people do. But uh, it's going gonna, it's gonna to tie up the courts quite a bit, I'd say, with the new rules and regulations. It keeps many lawyers uh, quite wealthy and busy. Yeah, well, that's the one segment that will really benefit most, isn't it? That's right. Yeah. The lawyers. Um, yeah, yeah, unless yeah. You, uh, we form a group together and we keep helping each other and quashing all these charges and get the John Termal uh, quash case or quash kit, which is free online. Um, and I, that's what I use myself. And uh, I, I got a little bit of a giggle from the judge, but he still accepted. You know, <laughs> yeah, that's, ma- yep. that's all that matters is that he accepted it, right? That's right, yeah, that's-, that's right. And yeah. and the yeah. kid for the kid is free online. I know several people that have used it, uh, to, and uh, walked from their charges. That's great, yeah. so uh, yeah, yeah. yeah but they've uh, and you know, all the power to them. And I think that the more of us that do that, and if we can support each other or have a group that we can. Um, and talk about our, how are we handle our case and the ones that uh, manage to get away with it and, you know, to walk away uh, without charges should be, um, you know, helping the others do the same. And the more of us there is, the better it is and the, the more acceptable it will become and set precedents. Yeah, yep. yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, much more to come for sure, weaving its way through the court system. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, oh, ladies, I'm going to jump in here now. All right, then. All right. Okay, uh, Virginia, you, you have, you met, you've been talking about tea, but you got coffee as well, right? Right, we have coffee. Correct, all right. Well, and apple cider. Uh, yeah, well, our listeners know that I try to match the song to our guest. So tonight's music is by the Lab Cats, and the song is Coffee and Pot. But after the break, Kim and I will continue our conversation with Virginia. This is the Pace Radio Show. We are live at LifestyleRadio.net. Hey, this is Cheech. And this is Chong. And you're listening to Lifestyle Radio. What is it? Lifestyle Radio. Say it one more time. 420 Radio? Ooh. You're listening to Lifestyle Radio. Canada, the time to act is now. These days, your customers are seeking variety. Increase your earning potential by expanding your inventory with CC Nexus, Canada's largest cannabis seed wholesaler. CC Nexus stocks over 60 reputable breeders, including Canuck Seeds, with a wealth of auto flower, regular, feminized, and CBD strains. All first time customers will receive a free pack of Canuck Seeds, plus a mug, t shirt, and additional promotional materials. Add strains and increase your profit with CC Nexus, your Canadian-owned and operated wholesaler of cannabis seeds. Discreet, worldwide stealth shipping from Canada, supporting you locally. Call today, 1-844-843-7995, 1-844-843-7995, or visit us at ccnexus.global. 
Are you looking for cannabis news, education, and people's opinions? Are you looking to learn what Canadian and international cannabis advocates are doing? Not only now, but what got them to this point in their lives and what does the future hold for them? Do you want to learn how patients are using cannabis as their daily medication? Or learn how their cannabis use helps them with their medical condition? If you answered yes to any of these questions, then I'm going to suggest to you to tune in to Lifestyle Radio. Catch their live weekly shows and have your questions and concerns answered and find the experience you're looking for. Monday, catch your weekly news broadcast with the Reef Reporters. Then on Wednesday, get several hours worth of cannabis public education. We get things started with cannabis and coffee with Tamarawana. Then tune in and catch Pottawa with Russell Barth, who calls himself the world's angriest pothead. Finish up your evening with the award-winning Pace Radio Show with Al Graham and joint host Kim Cooper and Alicia Yashishin. No week would be complete without tuning into Friday night's program, the 420 Radio Show featuring Al Rapp and the 420 Radio crew, Mary Jane Baker and Marcel Gignac. Cannabis is a lifestyle, and you can catch all your cannabis lifestyle information right here at lifestyleradio.net or at our sister site, 420radio.ca. Celebrate Indigenous Awakening at Legacy 420's first Outdoor Music Fest, August 11th on the Tyendinaga Mohawk Territory. This one's about rock and roll and comic books and bubblegum. Featuring Headstones, DJ Shove, Derek Miller, and more with host MC Howie Miller. Opening drum ceremony at 12 noon. Medicinal food and Indigenous vendors and artists. Free camping. Tickets $75 at Legacy420.com. A 19 and over event. Indigenous Awakening, Saturday, August 11th on Tyendinaga Mohawk Territory. Take Highway 401, exit 556. Sponsored by... By Nimka and Legacy 420. Man, have you been to Canada's yet? Canada's. Campbellford's premier cannabis culture shop at 19 Bridge Street West. They've got bongs, oil rigs, grinders, and papers. Everything you need for consumption. They've got seeds, soil, nutrients, and dome trays, too. Everything you need for cultivation. Get top quality seeds from top suppliers like Canuck and wholesaler Nexus. Canadays. They've got all kinds of awesome cannabis novelties, clothing, and apparel. I know, right? It's a lot more than just a bong shop. Interested in gaining legal access? Canadays can help. They're a PACE information center. You know, people advocating cannabis education? Come by the shop and check it out. 19 Bridge Street West, Campbellford. Canadays. Have your say without saying a word. Canadays.ca Hey, we're back. You're listening to the Pace Radio Show, and we are live at lifestyleradio.net. You can also catch us over at 420radio.ca as well as the Pace Radio website found at pace hyphen online tonight on the program we have our joint host northern ontario kim cooper and our guest virginia vidal of mary's wellness mary's wellness there we go get it out right okay ladies uh we're talking about uh, a bunch of stuff before the break and i think we're going to change topics yeah we're going to dive into Mary's Wellness and all the products that Virginia good. offers through the company. Good stuff. I'm listening. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to sit I'm, here and listen. <laughs> yeah, I'm. Oh. Uh, I'm so excited. I mean, I, I tried your green tea. I picked some of that up last year from O Cannabis when I was there, but that's the only one that I've tried. Now you've got all kinds of new products since then. Holy cow! Uh, you're into the apple cider now too, and hot chocolate, uh, and you've obviously now got orange pico as well for the regular tea drink drinking uh, people out there uh so many products mm. that are so good for you i know they're awesome um uh, people really like to go to the orange pico because it's something they're familiar with yep. and so we have orange pico it's something that they're used to as well as earl gray because there's actually uh, uh many healing benefits to it um so we what we have is three great uh black teas three green teas three herbal teas, and three fruit teas. And then we have what I call it our dessert drinks. 
And that's um, that's what my son's favorite is because that's the, uh, I guess, the young line, which is the hot chocolate, apple cider, and um, and then we have the French vanilla and um, it was an English coffee, and then um, all the sweeter stuff that people enjoy and love wow. and their cannabis, and they add to. The whole benefit about the product is that it's on the go, single use. So what it is, is that you can take your packages and you can get a cup of hot water pretty much anywhere from Tim Hortons to a Starbucks or any coffee shop. And then you just take our package or single use and just add to that hot water, whether it's coffee or some people actually like to add our hot chocolate to their regular Timmy's coffee or some of our products or to their regular coffee. Others just get hot water and have it as is. Uh, but the the benefit is to have it on the go. We also have doctors who are currently promoting our product. One of them actually carries it in his clinic and doctor a wellness clinic in Oshawa, um, as well as a local doctor uh, who has decided to uh, recommend it to his patients because he has found Several of his patients are having um, great results and benefits to it, from pain management to being able to focus to sleep. Sleep is one of the major ones, and that's why we now have a sleep and relax tea. That one is doing really well, the sleep and relax tea, because it has chamomile, which is a great muscle relaxant, as well as uh, peppermint. For those who know, peppermint is great at keeping your body alkaline. And when fighting cancer tumors, you need to keep your body alkaline because it's not the right environment for tumors to grow. So keeping your body alkaline is a very good way to keep tumors and cancer tumors from growing or developing in your body. So whether or not you like having peppermint on your own, that's great if you like having it on your own. But if you don't, we have a really great blend, which is the Sleep and Relax, which has the peppermint and the muscle relaxant um, chamomile, as well as valerian root, that mix with cannabis is amazing for sleep. It's like a sleeping pill on steroids, I would call it. I uh-huh. think uh, if, I drink, <laughs> if I drink that tea, I'm usually out within 15 to 20 minutes because when you have tea as a liquid versus an edible, uh, because it's a liquid, it goes into your bloodstream within 15 minutes. An yeah. edible, you have to digest it. So you That's have right. to wait much longer to feel the effects. I mean, you're talking to a tea drinker here. I I mean, for just regular orange pico tea, I probably drink anywhere from 10 to 15 cups of tea a day. So I'm, I'm so excited to try some of your new products. I mean, that sleepy one time tea that you're talking about sounds just perfect for me. Amazing. Actually, yep. I'm definitely happy to send you a a large selection of our tea for you to sample it out and then uh, tell us what you think. I also, I, I would, yeah, I would suggest uh, one of our green teas that we have, and that's the one I usually use every morning. It's called the green tea with ginseng, and I actually should rebrand it as an energizing tea because it is an energy blend. Um, and that's for us, it's really good for um, who are stoners who like to wake and bake to get that little bit of energy boost, you know, because it's uh, with sativa uh, as well as you know, it's what I prefer to have in the morning, and uh. You know, so you don't feel like going back to bed and you feel like moving on and doing your business and become a functional yeah. owner. That's as I like to call it, a functional yeah. owner. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, I mean, all of this uh, inspir- inspiration came obviously from from your own experience uh, in using these teas to get through your, your pregnancy with your triplets and everything else. Uh, now, you've got six kids. And you're Mm -hmm. operating this awesome, massive business. Wow. (laughs) Thank you. As well as I looked up to my grandmother who had dementia for five years while taking care of the triplets from the time they were three years old, three and a half. So I looked up to my grandmother with dementia. So this also was a way that actually really helped calm her down. Um, and, and what I found was after she consumed the tea after 15 or 20 minutes, whether it was a tea or a lolly, but mainly the tea, uh, she would, um, she would actually start remembering stories and, and start telling me stories about her past. So it was actually, uh, quite nice and, uh, to have her uh, kind of back and being able to communicate and tell us 
what uh, some of her memories, and it was lovely. My grandmother, however, her, her uh, with the business and her health deteriorating, she's now in a nursing home, but I do see her on a regular basis. I see her at least uh, three times a week, and um, it's kind of funny because her nurses tell me that uh, I give the nurses to they love it, and they tell me that they feel there's a real need for this type of product, especially the sleep and relax tea, for uh, nursing homes. They feel yeah. that the uh, seniors would benefit so much more from having a sleep and relax tea at the end of the night than having a sleeping pill that most of them are given at the end of the day. That's right. I mean, it's so much better for us. It's an all-natural benefit. It doesn't have any of the harsh side effects, and it does the job. Um, so, I mean, why not? I, I hope that this comes to every nursing home across the, the country eventually uh, because of the medicinal values. And, I mean, tea. Uh, were you always a, a tea lover, or how did, how did this come to be for tea for you? Um, I'm originally from the Azores in Portugal, and okay. where they actually grow a specific type of tea. And as a little girl, we actually used to have um, tea bushes as uh, a way to hear how we have senses to the vital properties. We used to have tea bushes. So every year we dried up our own tea. And as a little girl, I became a fan of uh, doing our own tea and having our um, you know, the different blends. And uh, when David's tea came out, I thought it was amazing. I'm like, wow, these guys have so many blends. And I became a big fan of to the point that I got my daughter a job there. <laughs> <laughs> and, Family uh, discount, and then, right? <laughs> see, that's right. That way I could definitely get a discount. It was amazing. <laughs> and, then, uh, and then when I, uh, you know, tea was always a big part of it. And then when I started using it as a way to medicate and, and during my pregnancy and also care for my grandmother and my triplets, I had six surgeries after I had the triplets, six surgeries in three years. And, uh, and I've got to tell you, I, um, I did it quite nicely with just using cannabis and not having to really do with uh, very heavy uh, pharmaceuticals. I mean, immediately after surgery for the first week or so, yes, I did take the heavier yeah. pharmaceuticals, but not much longer after that. I do That's recall, you know, after two weeks going to a doctor's appointment and they asking me if I needed more painkillers. I'm like, no, I still have the ones you gave me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, I'm hearing that a I, lot lately uh, from different people about their surgeries. No, I took them for a couple of days, you know, five days a week, and then that's it, threw them away. You know, I just used my yeah. hands, say. And, and yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. I think that would really help with the current issue that we're facing, you know, of, uh, of the uh, addiction, the opioid addictions that people have. I mean, it's a real problem. Yeah, and, uh, well, they put you I, on I these pills I, for weeks and weeks after these surgeries, and then they say, okay, you're done. And by then, some people are already addicted. Yes, I know, and um, it's hard for them to get off and to function, and yeah, it's, it's a real issue, and I, I don't feel there's a lot of help for them out there. And I think that uh, cannabis could be a real good solution for many of these people to slowly wean themselves off these very uh, damaging uh, pharmaceutical drugs that they're encountering and having an issue with. It's like they put these things out there and then people become addicted to it and then they get punished for it. it it's actually really sad. It's really sad. And they yeah. should be helped, not punished. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, well, for sure. Completely agree with you. Well, Please. I also feel that uh, another place would be great for the teas would be actually hospitals, you know, uh, in hospitals right now, people have tea in the morning uh, with every meal, um, pretty much almost with every meal. They have tea for breakfast, they'll have a tea for lunch, and they'll have a tea for with their dinner. Yep. So imagine that we actually had different healing teas targeted to what their ailments are that would benefit these people and actually have a beneficial uh, versus just you know a regular tea to go with a meal. For sure. For sure. Yeah. And not just tea. I like this apple cider idea. Hot yeah. chocolate. Maybe. Hot chocolate here. Oh, 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 <laughs> Al's on the hot chocolate. <laughs> apple yeah. cider. Yes, yes. Oh, is that my one of the kids' ideas? My business my oldest son. Yeah, my oldest son is my business partner, and um, he keeps telling me, I keep telling him, but Ricardo, it's not, hot chocolate is not exactly a wellness 
And he goes, yeah, Coco is. And, you know, there's, yeah. there's wellness. As long as it makes people feel good, there's a wellness aspect to it. And yeah. My concern is the amount of sugar. And I'm always, you know, I'm being a mom. I want to be the world's <laughs> mom. Everybody's mom. No, it's not <laughs> sugar for you. <laughs> 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 uh, but but you couldn't resist, right? Because it's just so That's good. Right. That's right, and and people love it. It's actually one of the number one sellings. I mean, and the tea we have are a few number one sellers. Uh, but when it comes to the drinks, definitely the hot chocolate is the number one, mm-hmm. followed by the uh, by the apple cider. Yeah, people going for the really sweet. Eh? People go. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Sure, for sure. Sweet, sweet, uh, sweet tooth or sweet belly. <laughs> yeah, for everybody. So, uh, well, that's Virginia, the thing. Uh, you get the munchies, then you want something sweet, right? And, yeah. yeah, I get it. I get yeah, it. So I know, but some, to... but sometimes when you have the munchies, and okay, I'm a person with, who's has Crohn's disease, and cannabis helps me with eating, but sometimes it helps me too well, yeah. and I and I and I end up overeating yeah yeah Yeah. so um you know a person you know having a hot chocolate you know it could probably you know help with that craving to get something to eat because you're getting the sweetness uh what you're doing yeah that could be a huge benefit for you fill your belly up still without adding that extra you know hard substance yeah yeah Exactly. Mm-hmm, so yeah. your your products, um, as far as like I know, you got this website. I've seen them in different places in Toronto. Uh, yeah. Are you you know spread out across the country? You're going international oh, yeah. with it. We're Canada wide, and actually, we used to have. We literally, I don't know if you remember this in the day or not. We used to have ready to drink juices too. It was Mary's uh, wellness juices, and we had. Grape juice, and we had um, mango. Uh, what was the other one? Uh, fruit punch. Oh, and yeah. um, and these juices also had cannabis, and uh, they were absolutely amazing, and, and they had a great following and a fan club. But uh, our production line kind of broke, and we can continue that. Plus, it's quite expensive to ship juices. Yeah. Uh, however, we're looking at uh, co- uh, co-packing and partnering up with another company to go back to ready-to-drink um, edibles or beverages because ready-to-drink is is a lot more it's automatic satisfaction versus having to prepare and you can have it on the go. You can have it anywhere and yeah. you don't have to worry about preparing or having to get the hot water. But, yeah. you know, we do have the convenience right now. Uh- and and the, and you mentioned earlier about the fact that it just its effects um, you know occur earlier or happen earlier because of the fact that you don't need to digest it. That's right. Yeah. Whenever you're you're consuming a cannabis uh, beverage or it's like alcohol, it will affect you much quicker than if you were to you know to consume and have to digest it. It's, yeah. It takes about fifteen minutes. And that's why the same thing goes for healthy juices. And that's why we need to consume those, even with cannabis. So it goes into our system right away and we glow up and feel amazing. Here I am trying to keep the world healthy, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of keeping the yeah. world healthy, uh, you're trying to really expand your brand. You're looking at, at going international a little bit. And uh, I know you can't say too much about this, but we will uh, let our listeners know you had an opportunity to uh, make your pitch to some pretty big boys in a den recently, right? Yes, yes, the Dragon's Den. Now, that was funny. Uh, that was a lot of fun. That was a great experience. That was on April 25th when we first presented to uh, the Dragons. Um, that was definitely a great experience. It was a positive experience. Um I can't say too much because we have an NBA sign, and until the yep. show airs in in, uh, in the fall, I can't really discuss it. But, however, apparently five weeks prior to the show, I could talk about it. So maybe we want to revisit this, and I could tell you all about it and my views on it. We okay. also did a, a, a more recent pitch, which was the uh, Toronto Hotbox uh, um It was kind of a, not Dragon's Den, but more like of... Um, Oh, what's the other show called? Jesus, shark, tank. shark Tank. Shark Tank. Yeah, Shark Tank uh, style 
type of pitch. And we had a lot of fun with that. I actually, they didn't quite uh, uh, put that part on the pitch, but at the end I ended up with, well, gentlemen, you know, we always come to these pitches asking you um, to bid on our companies, but we never know how deep your pockets are. Well, let's see, how deep are your pockets? How much money do you have to invest? You know what I'm saying? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so I really turned it around to them and it really got the crowd because this was in a theater and it really got the crowd going and applauding and it was quite fun. It, I thought that was a lot of fun. And it was just so, you Called know, them it, out, you it did. Was, I did. I did. <laughs> you called you know? them out. <laughs> and, uh, That's fantastic. So you're yeah, pitching this to everybody. Oh, yeah. I think that uh, getting your product out there, getting your story out there to as many people as possible is is a great way to tell people about your product, tell them the benefits of it. Because when you look at it, I mean, we're just a small portion of this industry. Yes, we're advocates. We love our, our friends in this industry. I love my Canna family. But we're a very small group. Now, we have to attract is the larger group, mainstream. And yep. they're a little weary. They're a little nervous about this. Some of them are returned uh, consumers. Some of them are newcomers. And some of them are not comfortable with the idea of losing control to getting high into cannabis. God knows we only chase that and want that again. But <laughs> these people, <laughs> a lot of new people are not used to uh, that. They don't want to get high. They don't want to lose that. And they're not comfortable with that. So they want products that they will not clean out. Most products right there on the market right now, a lot of edibles, I love them. They're great and nice and strong for me and for people like ourselves. But for the newcomers, they're way too strong and they will clean out. And that's why they end up in emergency rooms or they, it turns them off the product. We don't want to do that. (laughs) Yeah, they end up in emergency rooms. You got to start low dose and and a lot of people are aware of that and they have no self-control. They eat the whole cookie or they eat the whole brownie and they should have only eaten a quarter of it. I know. I I know how hard it is to eat a half a cookie. Jeez, that's so hard to eat a half a cookie. They they, they ate half a cookie, waited 10 minutes and ate the other half. Yeah. Oh, it's not working yet. Eat more. I yeah, saw a yeah. package once that it said eat half a gummy, and I'm looking at it. I'm like, how do you eat a half a gummy? Yeah. I can't eat a half a gummy. I'm eating the whole gummy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so, Head and all is going first. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Well, but so you're supplying, you know, a means for for newbies, I guess, so to speak, yes. to partake and and do that's so right. safely. And Zoomers, especially Zoomers. I find that we were at the Zoomer show, and yeah. uh, not the, the actual radio show, but they have a, an expo, the Zoomer expo. Sure. And, uh, and they were highly interested because it was an acceptable way for Zoomers to consume yeah. cannabis. This yeah. is an acceptable way. I mean, can you see, I mean, uh, my grandmother, I can't see her lighting up a joint. I can't yeah. see most of the people in a nursing home wanting to light up a joint. Yeah. Some of them maybe, but not the majority of them. It's not acceptable. It's not acceptable for uh, my grandparents' generation as well as my parents' generation. However, having a tea is acceptable to them. Yeah. Absolutely. I know a most. A tea and a biscuit. Yeah, I know yes. most Snymer and the Zoomer organization, the magazine, the t- the radio show, and everything, as well as the uh, the event that they take place. They were extremely interested in uh, cannabis and and what Normal Canada was doing on the legalization front when I was with Normal four years ago. Uh, so they've they've been at the. That's where I originally year. met you. I they signed were, uh, up for Normal. Yeah, yeah. They, they were also. Yeah. Involved. They were also, they had a booth at um, the Treating Yourself Expo. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Really? So they've, they've yep. been heavily involved in this for quite some time. Yeah. I remember giving uh, Moses a really nice uh, basket with a teapot that was shaped like a radio. And he was very uh, grateful and thankful. And uh, he really enjoyed it, he told us later on. He was, uh, yeah, he quite enjoyed it. And uh, he's been a supporter of Mary's, actually, to be honest. And uh, we're grateful for that. Excellent. 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 Yeah. It's, uh, yeah. it's, that time. it's that time again. Break time. It's time for break. another commercial. Oh, my goodness. It does go quickly. It Bye. does, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> wow. Okay. 
Um, we're going to hear a little bit more of Lab Cats, and then uh, we'll continue our conversation with uh, Virginia when we get back from the break. You're listening to Pace Radio Show. We are live here at LifestyleRadio.net. So what are you doing? Nothing. Why not? It's time to get on this Lifestyle Radio website. Sounds like a cool website. Yeah, it's alright. Oh, yeah, I might have it. You might have it. Man, I have you been to Canada Days yet? Canada Days. Campbellford's premier cannabis culture shop at 19 Bridge Street West. They've got bongs, oil rigs, grinders, and papers. Everything you need for consumption. They've got seeds, soil, nutrients, and dome trays too. Everything you need for cultivation. Get top quality seeds from top suppliers like Canuck and wholesaler Nexus. Canna Days. They've got all kinds of awesome cannabis novelties, clothing, and apparel. I know, right? It's a lot more than just a bong shop. Interested in gaining legal access? Canna Days can help. They're a PACE information center. You know, people advocating cannabis education? Come by the shop and check it out. 19 Bridge Street West, Campbellford. Canna Days. Have your say without saying a word. Canadays.ca. Hi, this is Al Graham of the Pace Radio Show. Are you keeping pace, as in keeping people advocating cannabis education? If you're not, and you're a cannabis consumer, then why not? Others are working hard every day to help educate people about cannabis so you can enjoy your daily 420. Get involved and speak out. Be loud and proud so that you can keep pace. Tune into the Pace Radio Show every Wednesday at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time to hear about people advocating cannabis education here on Lifestyle Radio. In 2017, the Canadian government announced that although recreational cannabis would be federally legal, its distribution and sale would be determined by individual provinces. Later that fall, the province of Ontario announced its proposed legal framework, that a subsidiary of the LCBO be the sole proprietor of cannabis in our province, essentially creating a one-party monopoly. This government-controlled monopoly could result in longer wait times, supply issues, and insufficient experience due to lack of proper consultation with the pre-existing industry. The provincial government believes this framework will restrict access to children and help eliminate the black market, but this proposed action will only push illicit suppliers further underground. Meanwhile, over the past two decades, there has been a growing industry of intelligent, savvy, and responsible cannabis entrepreneurs who have been working hard to provide access and education around the medicinal, therapeutic, and recreational uses of cannabis. We are Sensible Ontario. We're not new, but we're excited to meet you. Visit our website now and donate to become a part of Making Sense. If you'd like to learn more about Sensible Ontario, go to sensibleontario.ca. Celebrate Indigenous Awakening at Legacy 420's first outdoor music fest, August 11th on the Tyendinaga Mohawk Territory. Featuring Headstones, DJ Shub, Murray Porter, and more. With host MC Howie Miller. Opening drum ceremony at 12 noon. Medicinal food and indigenous vendors and artists. Free camping. Tickets $75 at Legacy420.com. A 19 and over event. Indigenous Awakening, Saturday, August 11th on Tyendinaga Mohawk Territory. Take Highway 401, exit 556. Sponsored by NIMCA and Legacy 420. Canada, the time to act is now. These days, your customers are seeking variety. Increase your earning potential by expanding your inventory with CC Nexus, Canada's largest cannabis seed wholesaler. CC Nexus stocks over 60 reputable breeders, including Canuck Seeds, with a wealth of auto flower, regular, feminized, and CBD strains. All first-time customers will receive a free pack of Canuck Seeds, plus a mug, t-shirt, and additional promotional materials. Add strains and increase your profit with CC Nexus, your Canadian-owned and operated wholesaler of cannabis seeds. Discreet, worldwide stealth shipping from Canada, supporting you locally. Call today, 1-844-843-7995. 1-844-843-7995. Or visit us at ccnexus.global.
Hey, we're back. Thank you for tuning in to the Pace Radio Show once again. And we are live here at LifestyleRadio.net. Plus, you can catch the podcast afterwards at iTunes, Showcast, or iHeartRadio, North America Wide on iHeartRadio. And uh, for the first time, we are also broadcasting live at the, I hope I get this right, Ganjanistas uh, Vapor Lounge. They are located at uh, 242 King Street West in Hamilton. Uh, today in the program, uh, the music was by uh, the Lab Cats. They were an Ontario-based band, and it was their song, Coffee and Pot. If you enjoyed it, uh, you can check it out on YouTube. Tonight in the program, we've got uh, our guest, Virginia Vidal, uh, Mary Wellness. I hope I got your name right, Virginia. <laughs> oh, it's, you got to find it. It's Virginia Vidal. It's perfect. It actually means life in Latin. Go figure it. The, oh, there you go. There you go. There you go, eh, Kim? <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay, ladies. Uh, we're, we're into the last segment here. And yep. um, uh, where are we going, Kim? Uh, we're going we're gonna to talk about the latest uh, conference that Virginia was a part of. Um, and I watched a segment of this that was filmed by uh, Tracy Lamery. Uh, we touched on this at the very beginning of the show, and I want to go back to it and get some more details on it. Uh, the O Cannabis Conference. Now, this was uh, the second year for this conference. It was held last year in Toronto at the Sheridan Center. This year, they moved it out to Mississauga to the convention center out in Mississauga. There was quite a few changes in the O'Cannabis conference that we were talking about during the break. Uh, But I want to start off with uh, the panel that you were on. You were uh, up and you did a a talk with some other members, uh, some other patients, as well as a doctor that was on the panel, and you discussed uh, cannabis use medicinally. Uh, How did that that go? Uh, Tell me about the conference and and your talk. Um, I've Actually, that went really well. Um, I didn't actually intend to uh, kind of hijack the, the conversation, but it, I felt it turned out to be that way because of the amount of information I had and uh, was based on uh, actual life experience. So, And I had to share or wanted to share that with the crowd. And uh, by my surprise, I was actually really... Um, um, I, I got a positive uh, reassurance from a reassurance from the other panelists, and um, it was really good to see. And really, what it was discussing about was uh, the use of cannabis while uh, uh, parenting, and that was the whole panel. And I talked about my usage of cannabis during my pregnancy with the triplets and how that helped me. And uh, the doctors at first were a little, and even uh, the audience were a little. Uh, concerned and unsure about cannabis use and um, and pregnancy. However, when you consider the fact that there's a lot of um, uh, uh, pre- high-risk pregnancies, and um, my pregnancy was a high-risk pregnancy with triplets, uh, and when you can... Uh-oh. 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 All right. I know producer's going to be digging in and trying to get her back. So in the meantime... It's gone on too. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, he's there with us. Great. Oh, oh, oh she, she's like back. We... She's back. I'm back. <laughs> so, uh, where was I? And I was saying it was that uh, I got the support from uh, the um, the crowd and the doctors when I explained that even though people were unsure or uncomfortable with the idea of cannabis and pregnancy, the fact that there is a lot of high risk pregnancies that people don't realize that are treated with a lot more severe medications. And what happens is the infants after birth, right after birth, have to go to rehab and they have to go through withdrawal. And I actually had, surprisingly, had the support of the doctors saying that a lot uh, more research needs to be done into cannabis and that they feel that um, I am right in, uh, and that I um, I had done basically what I needed to do to survive and bring my pregnancy to term. And they were very supportive of what I did. Uh, and I'm glad that there was because uh, not always you're sure about what you're doing. You just go with your gut feeling. However, seeing children and babies going through rehab because they had to be off morphine or be off uh, Percocets because their mothers had to intake that during their high-risk pregnancy 
is something to be concerned. And the effects of those drugs on the babies are something to be concerned. There's a lot of long-term effects to it. However, in cannabis, uh, my long-term effect to my babies from the resulting in my usage of cannabis during the pregnancy to deal with all my different ailments was they had the munchies. They had a really bad case of the munchies. And I mean, try breastfeeding triplets who have a bad case of the munchies. <laughs> <laughs> Lots of work for mom. <laughs> it was a lot of work for mom. I actually did a show back then. It was called uh, Birthdays, and it was the same idea as bringing home baby. And the show was actually, um, it's actually been international. Uh, my family in Portugal says so they've seen the show. It ran on Slice, and it went all over Canada. And it was bringing home the babies. And where they show where I was actually nursing triplets, and they thought this was amazing, but these babies were always feeding. I felt that I only had a half an hour in break between feedings because they were always hungry. And I got to tell you, I had to be the cannabis. Because they were preemie babies who just grew very fast into big babies within four months. So, <laughs> yeah, there's a but lot of But think of the children. <laughs> think of the children. That's right. Did any of the, did, hey, Virginia, did any of the doctors from back then that, you know, you went through, used your tea in order to be able to, to carry your babies uh, full term, did any of them ever follow up with you over time to see about their development because of the concerns of development with uh, cannabis? Well, um, doctors didn't know. Um, I, I mean, they, I don't know how they didn't know because I had blood work done it, every weekly. Okay, yeah. So how can you not see that in my blood? <laughs> it's Correct. impossible. However, they never questioned, and mm -hmm. they were happy with the development as I was going along to pregnancy, and they always used to say amazing, and they used to tell me I had a cervix of steel, and how did I keep so calm? And how are these babies so calm? And I'm like giggling, going, ha, 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 little do you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's how I keep calm, you know? Uh, but, uh, now, you mentioned earlier um, about a lady who was the uh, same as you, who was having triplets, and she had lost her all three of her children. Were you at that risk of any time? Or you're basically, high, you're always at that risk. You're always at that risk when you have multiples. I mean, it's yeah. a multiple pregnancy. There's, you're growing. Uh, at one point, I was four people. I had four hearts beating. Wow, in me. yeah. There was actually four hearts in me beating at once. So you got to consider the toll that it takes in one's organs, especially the mom. Uh, towards the end of my pregnancy, um, the effects of the what it was doing to my body was apparent. So, like I was getting blotchy, I had edema, my legs were swollen, and I really could not have seen myself doing it without uh, the benefits that I was getting yeah. from using cannabis. And um, and I think that you know that really did help me. It really helped me along. It, it helped me bring my pregnancy to full term. And I think that, again, going back to that panel, there's more to be said and more mm -hmm. studies to be done because my babies were born full term for, for triplets and they did not need to, um, to go to any NICU or rehab. Now, for that poor mom, sorry, uh, that lost her triplets is really unfortunate. Uh, yeah. Her first triplet, baby A, uh, got an infection. And so from that infection, it transferred on to the other triplets. Uh, baby A passed away, and she had the same doctor as I did. And what happened was she had to go into forced labor to give birth to two live babies so that they can pass, and they passed. It's really a very sad story, and I feel that it could have been prevented. And that mom called me the day that she called me that night. I was actually nursing my babies because I was on night duty, and she called me to tell me of the loss, and I was devastated. And the exact words that she told me was that in the future, she was to get pregnant again, that 100% she was sure she would be consuming cannabis to treat her ailments during her pregnancy. Well, that's, yeah. It's sad that, that she didn't have, we didn't have the education to supply her in our medical system to prevent this from happening. In this day and age, the, the medical community is just so uneducated on the medicinal benefits of this plant. And, and that's been systematically done uh, you oh, know, yeah. by, I mean, by, so by our government. 
I want to tell you a little story. I mean, I was looking after my grandmother who was home with me and she has dementia. And in the morning I went to go and get grandma ready because I was getting the triplets. I, I would do this. This is how I would do. I would go to the gym in the morning and box because I love boxing. It would get my frustrations out. I'd smoke a joint, go boxing, come home, have a shower, uh, get the children ready for school, get granny ready in the morning. And so in this particular morning, I went to go and check grandma and grandma was on the floor. And I panicked and called 911, got the ambulance over, and I was got granny into the hospital. However, a week later, um, I get a call from Children's Aid. Apparently, the ambulance, um, which I was very clear, uh, the ambulance uh, ladies, three ladies that came, um, they noticed that I smelled like cannabis. None of the children, not the house, I did. I said, yes, I'm a medical cannabis user. And I have a license. And uh, and that was it. But uh, about a week or two later, after my grandmother's incident, I get a call from Children's Aid saying that uh, the um, the uh, they had a call from the, um, a concerning call from the ambulance um, uh, attendees, or I guess, uh, what do you call it? Yeah, Anyhow, the paramedics. They yeah. got here. The paramedics and that uh, there was a concern for the fact that I used cannabis while there was children in the house. They, I made a call about my grandmother and yet they were concerned about my children and my children were already getting ready and to go and had nothing to do with that. The house didn't smell like cannabis. I simply smell like cannabis. And to me these days, it's a natural aroma. Whether or not I wake and bake, I just always smell like cannabis. I think it's just in my DNA right now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, however, I had to deal with that. I've had to deal with that twice, and it was an a non- stigma, unnecessary, you know? unnecessary stress. Yeah. Uh, children's aid was easy to deal with. Uh, I explained it to them, and there's really nothing they can do legally because what most people don't understand is that they're an independent agency. They don't quite. They're not the government. People mistaken yeah. children's aid for being the government. They're not the government. No, they're independent. They, they are, don't answer to anybody. Exactly. There are yeah. agency that they gather information and then they supply that information to the government. And so you really have to set them straight with what the law is and tell them what your rights is. And there's not really much they can do. I, I had a and similar I experience. I, I had a similar experience where we were visited by the Children's Aid when my granddaughter was staying with us last year. Uh, and oh, there geez. was some concern about cannabis use in the home. Uh, and, and there was a call made and I brought them into the house and we did the same thing. I said, you know, yeah, I'm a cannabis patient. I'm a legal cannabis patient. I have a consumption room. It happened to be the front porch of my house. My granddaughter didn't go in there. That was my consumption. Let's space. give those, uh, those you unborn know? babies morphine. It's all okay, you know? right? Yeah. You know, <laughs> that was my consumption space and the kid didn't go in there and then that was fine. And they said, oh, you're legal. Oh, OK, well, that's fine. Then can I see your your things? And I said, yeah, OK. And I showed them all my stuff and they oh, OK, bye. And I never seen them again. So as long as you're a legal patient, it seems they they walk away. Um, exactly. But now how is if you're not a legal patient right now? they don't really necessarily walk away. You could be facing issues. My, I wonder, oh, I had my uh, friend who are, had her children taken away. Literally. Yeah. And this is not yeah. too long ago. Just, she was so in Ottawa. What, this was a couple of years ago. So how is that going to change with legalization, I wonder? <laughs> well, yeah, exactly. Big question. Good question. Because, I don't know. I mean, yeah, you what's good? not for having a beer in front of your kids? Yeah. I mean, honestly. Yeah, and especially now with the way that the laws are set up with the provincial regulations saying that there's no public consumption, people are going to have to cons- – will be consuming in, the, in yeah. their homes. And, no choice. Yeah. I got to smoke in the house. Law says I right. can't right. smoke outside. Now, well, like I said, I have a friend who doesn't feel comfortable smoking in the house because he's got yeah. small children. His wife is not comfortable with that. So he's kicked out to the car. So every time he's gotten – a couple times when he's got pulled over at a ride program, they're like, his car smells like weed. And he oh. has to explain it to them. And sometimes they're understanding and this been, there's been a couple of times where they weren't. Yeah. 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 All yeah. depends on who you get. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It yeah. all depends. And it shouldn't be like that. Isn't the law the same for everyone across the board? Should not yeah. all police officers be educated the same and the same rule applies for everyone? Like, yeah, but sadly, a lot of sense. 
Sadly, personal bias comes to play once again. Um, now, going back to the O'Cannavis for a second. Uh, now, the mm-hmm. panel, as you said, it was mostly uh, originally it was planned for uh, parenting and cannabis. So other people told their stories. Uh, once the crowd was understood where you were coming from and you gained the acceptance and stuff, I guess you talked about the course of using cannabis as a parent after birthing the children as well, right? Right, right. And, um, and that was definitely a way to cope. I mean, if you ever, a lot of, um, I say uh, many people, unless, unless you're a multiple parent, don't quite understand how it is to care for triplets, to care for not only triplets, but three older children, and then the responsibility of an elderly grandmother and a partner and, and much more in life. And uh, it's a lot to cope with on one a daily. And, uh, and I found that it was one way to cope, one way to relax and become a more uh, relaxed parent versus always on edge. It also, because I had multiple surgeries after I had the triplets, I had six surgeries in three years. There was a lot of recovery. And to me, that was a way to recover um, naturally and in a way that I did not need to have a withdrawal or have to go through uh, addiction. Um, like you would do with many of the painkillers or sleeping pills. So it was it was very important. And yes, and gaining the acceptance of the panel was important to me, uh, telling my story. I probably should have told them right from the beginning, but sometimes you do need to give that little bit of a shock and, and then people begin to understand uh, why you do the things you do and why they, um, you know, why the shock I had value, to consume it. Yeah, the shock value makes them stand up and listen, right? That's right. That's right. And uh, and as I said, even using cannabis as a parent with my teenagers, um, it made me a lot closer to my teenagers. We bonded in a way that uh, uh, I feel that um, uh, many of my friends didn't have the same bond with their kids, didn't have the same connection, because we could chill and talk about things and you laugh were, about it. And you it, weren't hiding and it. it was, I wasn't hiding it, no. I, I don't think that, I think that's, if you're going to be an educated, an educator to your children and want to teach them values in life, you can't be a hypocrite. That's right. You know, you really can't be a hypocrite. You got to be honest to your children. You got to be transparent. Um, it is life and it's something that they're going to have to face. And you, your job is really to prepare them for that. And I find that sometimes, you know, creating too much of a bubble is not really doing them any favors. Is not teaching them how to live life and how to how to belong and how to be um, you know acceptable members of society. Um, it's not everybody that drinks that becomes an alcoholic, and it's not everybody that uses cannabis that becomes a you know a uh, what they call it demotivated um, couch stoner, potato. you know, yeah, yeah, or yeah. a couch potato, or the what we all think of the Bill and Ted's uh, Great Adventures. Or, dude, yeah. how are you doing, dude? You know, yeah. that's not a typical <laughs> idea of a pothead. I yeah. mean, we have some really highly educated pot users out there. We have highly functional pot users out there. They're just not out and spoken because they don't want to be labeled. That's and right. uh, I, and I, I feel that we need to have more acceptance. We need to have more of us out there. And and I think that's coming. It's all, all of this. All of this is a step forward. Whether we like it or not. Whether we even like the new rules and regulations and law, those are all debatable. The fact that they're happening, we're out there now. We're, the talk is happening. The, you know, it's in the House of Commons. The House, they're, they're listening. They're finally listening to us. And prohibition is finally coming to an end. We don't care about all these rules because these are all debatable. And they will all change with time, like alcohol did. And, you know, yeah. it used to be bootlegged before. And all, it all changed with time where we freely could get it now. There's even order systems, you know? Yeah. yeah. And I think the fact that we have cannabis out there and the, on the table right now on talks is actually great strides. It's really positive. For sure, for sure. You have to start somewhere. Uh, laws that are written, no, no document is ever written, uh, first draft is perfect. It takes an exactly. evolution and rewrites, yeah. and it'll be the same for this. You know, you got to look at alcohol. Its legalization was almost 100 years ago. Um, and, uh, you know, they're still still working at changing laws. That's it. 
Ontario just got it in stores last year. Correct. <laughs> this well, year, this year. And that's only, that's only really large grocery stores, oh, yeah. certain, certain ones. You know, it's yeah. not the corner store. That's right. That's right. So, I mean, that's still Oh, and still the rules evolving. I didn't realize is that you can't buy it after 6 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> oh, really? So, so the stores yeah. won't be open until 9 yeah. on Fridays? <laughs> yeah. No, no, uh, no they're going to the close store is open. Yeah, the store yeah. is open. Okay, here's what happened this weekend because it was Father's Day and I wanted to buy a little six pack of Corona for the fun of it, right? Right. So I went there and I bought the little six pack. It was just up to six o'clock and the lady scans it and then she puts it into another register and she tells me she can't sell it to me. And I'm like, why not? I got the money here. I'll give it to you. And she tells me, no, because it's after six o'clock, even though the store is open till eight, we cannot sell you alcohol. At after six o'clock, because the FBO won't allow us, and I'm like, "Why are they saying no to money? I don't understand this." System. Yeah, why yeah. are they there till eight o'clock for two hours after yeah. they can't sell anything? Why yeah. is the oh, store no, we're still talking open? About in the grocery store, yeah. Oh, yeah. grocery store, right? Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, the yeah. grocery store has the rules where you can't. They can sell their groceries, but after six o'clock, they can't sell you the Corona that they have it on the shelf. And I thought this was ridiculous. So it, yeah. it just doesn't make sense to me. In the, How big, is it that- in the big, huge stores, they actually have um, those those metal shelf barrier things that come down on top of the shelf and they close it at six o'clock. So you can't even see it at six. Oh, my God. They, oh, they really? Key. Yeah, they shut the doors <laughs> on it, so that that shelf is closed off now. Okay, so my theory here is it is it because the uh, the the, uh, the LCBO is open only till six, so they don't want if yeah. they're not selling, no That's one else right. is not selling. Right. That's How does right. this make sense to anybody in terms That's of right. business? Well, because if I'm not selling, it. I'm oh. happy that my buddy is selling my product for me when I'm not selling. Do you know That's what I mean? It. I know, I know, I know. Yeah. Yeah. Whereas, whereas it, it just it doesn't done, make very good sense. If it, it, if, it, if it was if it was private retail selling alcohol, then they could have, you yeah. know, with, yeah. But they have to right now. They still have to put it through the LCBO and, and the regulations. We don't want the. That, we should be running this want. show, you know. We should be running this whole LCBO thing. We know how to do it right. We make sure that the grocery stores sell it until they close. Okay. <laughs> yeah, but that's exactly why we don't want them to follow the LCBO model for cannabis, uh, because these kind of rules are going to exist. Uh, mm-hmm. Hours of operation and all of the rest of it. Uh, so it's it's it's. Uh, pro- and- Sometimes I feel like I'm in, I'm watching a bad episode, a bad TV yeah. episode. I mean, they need to allow got to change. Sales. Independent yeah, sales, for sure. For sure. For that's sure. Right. Okay, ladies, I have to jump in here. Again. Yeah, we're getting yeah. close. Yeah, we've got, almost got our ninety minutes in here. So, oh, wow. um, yeah, hey. <laughs> <Where? Where? laughs> you like a lot of our other past guests. Wow, geez, that time just flew by. Yeah, um, everybody so, says. Yeah. Um, Virginia, have you got a uh, person, place, a thing, a website, stuff like that that you'd like to highlight or promote um, here in the program? Um, well, we uh, placed our things well. We uh, will be going out to uh, the Hamilton event uh, pretty shortly. Um, I think uh, Tracy has sent me some information on that. However, uh, I'd like to promote our website and yep. uh, for anyone that's interested in uh, looking at our products and our teas, we have our uh, website and you can go to www.maryswanless.com or Mary's Java. And for the show uh, page, if you go on and you uh, put in a code uh, lift or face, you will get a fifty uh, percent off on your first order of Mary's nice. products. Nice, excellent, excellent. yay, yeah, yes, fifty percent off. Yay, fifty percent, yeah. And that basically is the product almost at cost, just a little bit over, and that gives a chance for people to try the product. That's, yeah, excellent. awesome, exactly. Awesome. 
Awesome. Love it. Yes, yeah. For sure. So, okay. uh, and for any orders over, uh, any orders for 200 plus, it's free shipping in okay. Canada. Oh. But, you know, now, really. We're talking about Canada shipping. Only 10 bucks. You know, you were talking just before we um, uh, wrap things up here. Uh, you talked about, you know, in Canada and stuff and wanting to go international. Uh, shipping is that, I guess that's probably a concern right now, other than just here in Canada. Uh, in Canada, right now, we use couriers for shipping. Yeah. But um, as we're moving to the USA, we're going to be, uh, we're going to shipping, we're going to be shipping our uh, personal blend. So the yeah. tea will be blended. And then a licensed producer will be using their products there and packaging. Nice. Oh, okay, good, yeah. good, good. Makes it available. That's what you're trying to do. Okay, right. um, Kim, have you got a shout out? Yeah, I'm going to give my shout out this week to Legacy 420 and Mr. Tim Barnhart. They're hosting the Indigenous Cannabis Music Fest this coming August the 11th to August the 12th out in Tyendinaga, Mohawk Territory. Uh, I'm hoping to attend this event, so I'll see you all out there uh, for this great day in the sun out in Mohawk hey, Territory. I'd like to double that. Uh, we are running the commercials uh, here uh, on the Pace Radio Show. And just so you know, today I was at my specialist appointment and I heard it playing on the radio. Excellent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, hang on here. <laughs> I know that commercial. <laughs> and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna throw a shout out tonight. I'm gonna sh- I'm gonna throw it out to uh, Wayne down at uh, Canada Days. He's got 17 weeks left. He said when cannabis become legal, he would shave off his beard. Oh so, wow! Yeah, it's oh, called it his legalization beard, and he hasn't shaved in years. And he's I told him someone said, "Hey, you gotta shave you know? And I said, "You got." 17 okay, weeks so should left. we all go in on so, this and have some type of uh, thing we'll do when it becomes legal? Yeah, yeah, we got to yeah. live stream that shit for sure. <laughs> <laughs> so, know, yeah, Wayne Math- yeah, Wayne Matheson, uh, you can find him on Facebook. Uh, Candy Days has a Facebook page and say, hey, you got to live stream your shave bearding. <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Hell, I may make a trip to Peterborough for that. <laughs> oh, that's where he is? Oh, good. I'll, I'm with you. I'll come with you as well. <laughs> All right. I want to see that. Okay. Uh, <laughs> okay, uh, just a reminder, I'll be back. Uh, we'll be back next week with uh, Alicia and a special guest. Uh, you can find the Pace Radio Show on Facebook. We're on Twitter at Pace Radio. Uh, at the website as well, pace-online.ca, and we're on Instagram, uh, Pace Radio Show. Thank yous as always. Go to our friendly and helpful folks at CC Nexus, Canada's uh, largest cannabis seed wholesaler, as well as uh, El Rap, uh, the man behind the baggie, and to our guest, uh, Virginia Vidal of Mary's Wellness. Thank you, Mary, for, or not thank you, Mary. Thank you, Virginia. Hey! For, uh, <laughs> that can i please add that in the industry people actually started calling me mary and after two years i just gave up it is my middle name but after oh, two it? years i gave up and i've just become the mary of the industry i enjoy uh, it now it's my you know it's my other personality there <laughs> you go. You're i caught name. myself i caught myself earlier you're almost doing the same thing but no. <laughs> oh you're not the first one and it's quite funny and i'm enjoying it it's okay it's okay okay good good <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Kim, thank you for everything you do for the show. Oh, my pleasure, Al. And a big thank you to our, our listeners out there for tuning into the program every week. Thank you, and good night. Good night. Good night. So, what are you doing? Nothing. Nothing? Why not? Trying to get on the Slice Out Radio website. Sounds like a cool website. Yeah, it's all right. Oh. You're listening to Lifestyle Radio. The opinions expressed during this show are those of the individual participants and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of their associated organizations or Lifestyle Radio.